All right, so the first example that we're going to look at is we're going to compute this circulation integral of the vector field whose coordinates are x plus y and y squared around this curve C, where C is the counterclockwise triangle whose vertices are at the origin, the point 2, 0, and the point 0, 1. So let's first sketch a picture of C. I'm going to draw the y-axis and the x-axis. We have vertices at 0, 0, 2, 0, and 0, 1. Okay, so our curve C is the boundary of this triangle, and we're told that we're going around it counterclockwise. So you could orient C like this. Now, what we could do is parametrize the boundary of this region, this boundary curve C, and do this vector line integral in the usual way. However, that's not ideal here because the boundary would be done in three separate pieces. So instead, what we're going to do is apply Green's theorem. Okay, so let's use Green's theorem. I really wanted to write in green because it's Green's theorem, but unfortunately that marker isn't uh, working so well, so I'm going to switch to blue. But our vector field F is f of x and y equals x plus y comma y squared. In the language of Green's theorem, I often think of this first coordinate as the coordinate function p, and the second one as q. So what we're going to do is switch from the circulation integral to the double integral of a quantity that I often denote as the 2D scalar curl of this two-dimensional vector field f. Now I call it that. You can also just think of it as qx minus py, or dq dx minus dp dy. Okay, so dq dx is zero, and dp dy is one. So we're going to take the 2D scalar curl of, did I write this down? Wrong. Yes, I did. Let me just switch something so that it matches the problem I posted. This was supposed to be x squared. Doesn't matter, but let me just make it match the problem I actually gave. This was x squared, and this would have been x squared, so that when I did dq dx, I didn't just get zero, which again was fine, which is a slightly different problem. Now we're going to say this is 2x minus 1. Okay, so by Green's theorem, we're going to indirectly compute this vector line integral by directly computing a 2D integral, a double integral, and it's going to be the double integral over this enclosed region D. We are parametrized correctly so that as we drive around the boundary of D, the region D is on our left. So it's like, as I go this way, D is to the left. Okay, so that's the correct orientation for Green's theorem. So let me just write D for now. And we're going to do the 2D scalar curl of F. And then I'm going to write DA. And there we'll either replace that with DX or DY. Okay, so we want to describe this region D now with a pair of uh, inequalities. So let's see, our intercepts were two along the X axis, one along the Y axis. And then this line was, oh, it wasn't given to us. We need to figure it out. So let's see, we know the y-intercept is 1. Maybe the easiest thing to do is say y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. So the slope is up 1 over 2, but going up into the left. So that's negative 1 half slope x plus y-intercept of 1. And you can work with that if you like. I think I would rather solve for x in terms of y just to get rid of the fraction. So this is like 2y equals negative x plus 2. So x equals 2 minus 2y. That's the equation of the line. So to describe this region, I'm going to say that 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2 minus 2y. So as we travel through this region in the direction of increasing x, we go from 0 to that line. That will be the bounds of the inside integral. And then for the outer bounds, we see that y is between 0 and 1. 
Okay, so this pair of inequalities describes our region D. Okay, so for the outer integral, y goes from 0 to 1, x goes from 2 to 2, sorry, from 0 rather to 2 minus 2y, and then the integrand is going to be 2x minus y dx dy. At that point, the heart of the problem, which was to set it up really with Green's theorem, is done. But let's go ahead and finish integrating this. I'm going to take the antiderivative of this expression with respect to x. So we'll have the integral from 0 to 1, and then x squared minus x, evaluated from x equals 0 through x equals 2 minus 2y. Two and we still have to integrate with respect to y. Plug in top and bottom. We'll have the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 minus 2y two squared minus 2 minus negative 2y. So I'm going to write minus 2 plus 2y two dy. So let's see if I did that correctly. Um, 2 minus 2y two squared and then minus the quantity 2 minus 2y two is negative 2 plus 2y two and then minus 0 for the bottom bound, but I didn't write that. Okay, now we integrate this with respect to y. You might be tempted to expand this, but it's not necessary. The antiderivative of this with respect to y is going to be 2 minus 2y two cubed. I'm not done yet. If you imagine differentiating this, you would pull down the 3. So we'll put 1 third out front to cancel out that action. And then by chain rule, you'd also pick up a negative 2. So I'm going to do negative 1 half. Okay. So the antiderivative of 2 minus 2y squared is negative 1 6 times 2 minus 2y cubed. You can always differentiate that again to check yourself. Then minus 2y plus y squared. And then we'll plug in the top and bottom bounds, which are 0 and 1. All right, when we plug in 1, we get, and here, 2 minus 2. So the first term is going to be 0. And then minus 2 plus 1. And then plug in 0, and we get 1 third times 2 cubed, so 2 minus 0 cubed, times negative 1 half. I'm just going to write this out as negative 1 sixth times 2 cubed, and then minus 0 plus 0. All right, so that's negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And then 2 cubed is 8, so plus 8 sixths, or 4 thirds. Okay, so negative 3 thirds plus 4 thirds is 1 third. All right, so to summarize, we wanted to do a circulation integral. Not just a plain old line integral, but an actual circulation integral so that we were enclosing a region. Okay, Our region was this triangular region. So the original vector line integral that we were doing, the circulation integral, took us around the boundary of this triangle in such a way that as we traveled around the direction of the curve, the region that we were enclosing was on our left. So that's the orientation that you need for Green's theorem to go around the curve as you follow your parametrization. The region you're enclosing stays on the left. Okay. So um, with that, we're allowed to switch to Green's theorem. So we identified that this is a vector field with two coordinates. I call the first one P and the second one Q. To switch from the circulation integral to the double integral, we have to do this 2D scalar curl. So we do dQ dx, or take ddx of the second coordinate, minus ddy of the first coordinate. So that gave us 2x minus 1. That becomes the integrand for a double integral over the enclosed region. You have to describe that. So if you're using Green's theorem, and going this direction, the idea is that the double integral that you're going to be setting up is easier than the circulation integral. And it certainly is in this case, because instead of doing three individual line integrals, we had a pretty nice region to integrate over. Had to describe it. I described it as x bound between two functions of y. So 0 on the left and the line 2 minus 2y on the right. That forms the inside bounds of our integral, and then y going from 0 to 1 gives us our outer bounds. And then once we had this set up, the rest of it was just straightforward double integration. So it takes some antiderivatives, plug in top and bottom, and by the end, we get that that original circulation integral is one third.